what I'm going to be doing is I'll be performing the in cab pre trip along with the air brake. Now, the in cab and the air brake go along hand to hand. The in cab, you know, you can miss things, you know, just on the air brake, you cannot miss anything. If you miss anything on the air brake, it's a auto fail. So, the air brake is a pass or fail thing, you know, type thing. So, you can't go wrong with that. Now the end cap, you can miss the, the component here and there. You know they, you know, you just get points knocked out of that. But as far as the air brake check goes, that's a pass or fail. It has to be done right. If not, you fail. All right, guys, you want to start off by talking about your seat belt. Make sure it properly mounted and secured. It's not ripped or frayed. Adjust and latches properly. So you want to make sure that. You latch it on as soon as you talk about it. All right. Then you're going to talk about the safety equipment. The safety equipment consists of the fire extinguisher, the three re reflective triangles, and the spare electrical fuses in the glove box. So we're going to talk about the fire extinguisher. Make sure you point to it as you talk about it. Mine's behind the seat, so. Look at my fire extinguisher, make sure it's properly mounted and secure and fully charged. Then when you talk about the reflective triangles, make sure you point to the back underneath the bunk. I'm gonna look at my make sure that I have three reflective triangles underneath my bunk. And then when you talk about the spare electrical fuses, make sure that you point to the glove box to tell them that you're supposed to have spare ones in there. So I'm gonna look at my glove box, make sure I have spare electrical fuses. All right, then at this point, you want to talk about the mirrors. Make sure they're properly mounted, secured, not cracked, bent or broken, clean, and adjusted to me. At this point, you want to perform a safe start. But before you perform the safe start, you want to make sure that you tell the examiner that you're going to check that the ABS light comes on and off on the dash and on the trailer to indicate that it's working properly. All right, so when you're going to do the safe start, you want to tell the examiner, I will not perform my safe start, but before I do, I will check that the ABS light comes on and off on the dash and on the trailer to show that it's working properly. Then you proceed to do the safe start. Make sure it's in neutral. Press the clutch. Or put it on the on position. Make sure the ABS light comes on and off here. Look at the trailer. Come back over here it went on and off it came on and off so you tell the examiner the abs light came on and off which indicates it's working properly then you go ahead and proceed to do the safe start once you do the safe start right off the bat you want to do the city horn and air horn you want to demonstrate it all right you want to demonstrate both of those things and then in my truck, the voltmeter is not a gauge, it's digital, so I have to scroll down to it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the voltmeter. Make sure that the voltmeter, my alternator is charging between 13 and 14 volts. And then I'm going to talk about the oil pressure gauge. Make sure my oil pressure is rising to normal operating range. Then I'm going to talk about the water temperature gauge. Make sure that the water temperature is rising to normal operating range. And then I'm going to talk about the air gauges. When you talk about the air gauges, you want to talk about them both. All right. The primary and the secondary. All right. So the air pressure should build to governor cut, which is between 120 and 125 PSI. After that, <clears throat> you want to do the indicator lights. And when you do the indicator lights, you want to point to them left turn signal right turn signal high beams and four ways after that you want to do the uh, heater and defroster and when you do the heater and defroster you want to demonstrate it alright so you want to right off the bat you want to turn all three knobs the defroster the heater and put it on high make sure you wave your hands up on the front to show that it's working go ahead and put it back because it'll get hot pretty quick this time of day 
after that we're gonna talk about the windshield make sure my windshields you know when you talk about it make sure you that you point like this so he knows you're talking about the whole windshield not just one side and the reason I say that not just one side is because mine's split in half if, if yours doesn't have anything in the middle then obviously you know you talk about the whole windshield but make sure my windshield is probably minus secured clean free of obstructions not cracked all right I'm gonna look at my wipers make sure they're properly mounted secured not cracked when they're broken and operate smoothly at this point you want to demonstrate that with the windshield washer you know and then you want to say the windshield washer is working properly then you want to talk about the wiper blades make sure that the wiper blades are properly mounted secured not cracked or dry rotted so again at this point we have done everything that has to do with the end cap as far as the components after this you go ahead and proceed into the the tug test then the service brake check and then the air brake check which the air brake check has three stages I will now perform the end cap the component side of the end cap as I would on the test and you'll have you'll see me looking to my right to pretend there's an examiner there which you know it's the habit I do and you know I have my students do it because I usually sit there so all right so I'm gonna look at my seat belt make sure it's properly mounted secure not ripped afraid adjust and latches properly I'm gonna look at my fire extinguisher make sure it's properly mounted secure fully charged I'm gonna make sure I have three reflective triangles underneath my bunk and I have spare electrical fuses in the glove box. I'm gonna look at my mirrors, make sure they're properly mounted secure, not cracked when they're broken, clean and adjusted to me. I will not perform my safe start, but before I do, I will check that the ABS light comes on and off on the dash and on the trailer to indicate that it's working properly. ABS came on and off, indicating that it's working properly. I'm gonna do my city horn, air horn. I'm gonna look at my voltmeter, make sure it's my alternator is charging between 13 and 14 volts. And I'm gonna look at my oil pressure gauge, make sure my oil pressure gauge is rising to normal operating range my water temperature gauge make sure it's rising to normal operating range look at my air gauges my primary secondary make sure that the air pressure should build the governor cut which is between 120 and 125 psi i'm gonna do my indicator lights my left signal right signal high beams in four ways. I'm gonna do my heater and defroster. It's working properly. Look at my windshield. Make sure it's properly mounted, secured, not cracked, bent, broken, clean, and free of obstructions. I'm look at my wipers. Make sure they're properly mounted, secured, not cracked, bent, broken, and operate smoothly. I'll demonstrate my windshield washer fluid. My windshield washer working properly look at my wiper blades make sure they're properly mounted secured not cracked or dry rotted at this point once you've talked about the you finish talking about the wiper blades you would go ahead and go on and proceed to do the tug test now the tug test you want to make sure that you are in neutral both valves are popped out which they should be already from you know the you did the other part of the test so you, you want to tell them that you're gonna tug you're gonna do the tug test you're gonna tug against the trailer first so make sure it's a neutral put it in third gear so put it in third gear then you're gonna push in the truck the truck valve because you're gonna tug against the trailer so you want to release the clutch halfway until you feel a jerk. All right, 
Now you make sure that you feel that jerk because if not, he's not gonna know that you really tugged it. All right. You put put it back to neutral. Say I will not tug against my tractor. Same thing. Third gear. This time you want to push in the trailer valve to release the trailer so you can tug against the tractor. All right. And that is how you do the tug test. I will not perform it as I would on a test. I will not tug, I will not do my tug test. I will tug against my trailer first. I will not tug against my truck. And that completes the tug test. At this point, after you do the tug test, you want to do the service brake check. You want to tell the examiner that you will be performing the service brake check and that you pull forward at approximately five miles per hour and you'll depress on the brake and check that the truck does not pull to the left or the right. All right, so at this point, you want to put it in third gear, be ready to go. Release both valves, you know, and then you want to make sure that when you pull up, you know, I'm going to actually pull up and show you guys. When you pull up and do the service brake check, you actually want to make sure that you go up above five miles per, at least five miles an hour. And then come to a complete stop as quick as you can without jerking him obviously and then at this point you want to say the truck did not pull to the left or to the right so I'm gonna perform the service brake check as, as I would on a test I will not perform my service brake check I will pull forward at approximately five miles per hour and check that the truck does not pull to press on my brake depress on my brake and check that the truck does not pull to the left or to the right The truck did not pull to the left or to the right. After you have pulled forward, you're going to be in gear. The valves are going to be pushed in. So at this point, all you want to do is turn it off and then put it back on the on position. There's nothing else you have to do for this part. This is the, the pass or fail part of the test. All right, so at this point, you're ready to do the, the first stage of the air brakes, which is the applied pressure test. You know, the applied pressure test, you want to let the examiner that that you're going to fully depress on the air brake and make sure that you lose no more than 4 PSI within a minute while listening for air leaks. So at this point, well, first of all, you want to stabilize the gauges and then do that, or the air pressure and then do that. So at this point, you want to tell the examiner, I will fully depress on my brake, make sure my air pressure stabilizes, and then I will need you to assist me with timing me for one minute to make sure I lose no more than four PSI while listening for air leaks. So you're gonna fully depress on the brake, make sure that the gauge is stabilized, and then make sure it matches the applied pressure gauge, all right? So the, the pressure in the tanks must match the applied pressure. All right, pressure in the tanks must match the applied pressure. So at this point you wanna tell him, go ahead and start timing me. So at this point the, the examiner is gonna start timing you for one minute. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're looking at the gauges, mainly these, 
to make sure you lose no more than four PSI within that one minute while listening for air leaks. The one minute goes by, you tell the examiner, I did not lose more than four PSI within one minute while listening for air leaks. At this point, you proceed to go on to the second stage, which is the fan down until you hear the warning light and buzzard. All right. So at this point, you want to tell the examiner that you want to you're going to fan down the brake. You're going to press on the brake until the warning light and buzzard come on. I will not fan on my brake and at or before 60 psi. My low air warning light and buzzer should come on. So it's important that you say and at or before 60 PSI. My low air warning light and buzzer will come on. So at this point you fan down. So it came on before 60 PSI as you can see. As soon as that happens you stop. And then tell the examiner, I will continue to fan on my brake and between 40 and 20 PSI, my red and yellow valve should pop out. So remember, do not touch the valves. So you're gonna continue to fan down on the brake, pressing on the brake, and between the 40 and 20 PSI, the red and yellow valve should pop out. That's 20 and that's 40. So it's right in the middle between 40 and 20 PSI. And they both did pop out. At this point, you tell the examiner that completes my air brake check. If for some reason the valves did not pop out when they were supposed to, you tell the examiner that they didn't pop out when they were supposed to and that there's a mechanical problem. I will not do the air brake test and I'm at the point to where after you pull forward at five miles per hour and you did the service brake test. All right. So at this point, you got to make sure that it's in the on position. You don't touch the valves. You're good. So I'm going to talk to the examiner as if, as if I would on the test. I will not do my applied pressure test. I will fully depress on my brake, wait for my gauges to stabilize, and then ask you to time me for one minute to make sure I lose no more than four PSI while listening for air leaks. Will you assist me? They say yes. All right, so I fully depress. Stabilized. Go ahead and start timing me for one minute. I did not lose more than four PSI within one minute while listening for air leaks. I will now press on my brake or fan down my brake and at or before 60 psi my low air warning light and buzzer should come on the light and the buzzer come on before 60 psi i will continue to fan on my brakes and between 40 and 20 psi my red and yellow valve should pop out That completes my air brake check.